Exactly. And uh, I will open the session. Welcome all to the Atlas and Vishakhapatnam chapter event. This is the 12th event, uh, virtual event that I'm hosting for Vishakhapatnam chapter. So I do this for the sake of knowledge sharing and get the best practices in the industry on using the Atlas in tools and the marketplace plugins. Today's topic is the journey to the cloud, where Jean, uh, con uh, ex -cons consultant, and now the advocate for adaptivist in using the script runner tool and uh, giving us the best practices, the strategy in utilizing the Atlas in tools and the marketplace apps. If you know all the script runner from adaptivist is ruling the entire industry similar to Jira. So almost every project have been using that and they are planning to deploy if it's a new project. So that is the market they have, that is the feasibility and usability that we have from the script runner. Uh, I just don't restrict this session to the script runner. Jane here is here to help us understand the best practices in cloud migration, understanding the Atlassian ecosystem and what to do, what not to do. So over to you, Jean. Uh, please introduce yourself, and uh, we can start the session. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, hi. Yeah. Thanks, Abash. Um, so my name is I, JP. Actually, it's all in the presentation, so I'm just going to go. Uh, but hi, everyone. So uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about kind of server sunset and strategizing uh, to move to the cloud. And I'll explain all that in a second. But if I just, if you'll allow me to and why is this not doing what I want it to do? Yeah, okay. So my name is Jean-Philippe Como, or you could call me JPG, and that all works. Uh, I'm a customer success advocate with Adaptivist. Uh, three things you need to know about me. I'm a new dad. I'm a Star Wars fan, as evidenced by that crazy picture where Darth Maul actor was really freaking me out at Disney. And uh, also, I, I can't make samosas for the life of me. I tried three times now. And they come out like weird, just not good, not crunchy at all. So just so you know, I can't cook, and that's just a fact. Um, here's my LinkedIn. If you wanna, if you wanna connect and maybe talk more after this, uh, feel free to do that, and I'll have some more uh, ways to contact um, through to the end of the presentation. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about about the fake news out there really quickly. Um, we want to make sure that you understand that. First of all, server is supported until February 2024. And on-premise is just not ending, okay? DC will remain as an option for organizations who want or need to host their own instance. It's just that ser server is, is going away post-February 2024. Um, you can still deploy a single node DC instance and you can reuse the existing server infrastructure as a starting point. So that means that if you currently are hosted on server and you're trying to uh, keep everything the same as much as possible, you can input a, a, a da data center key into your product and it will turn into what we call a single node data center instance. And there, from there, you could start you know, scaling up into a multi-node environment. Um, we, we should not forget, however, uh, cloud and the SaaS mode of operation have like made great leaps. Um, and so if you're, you were in the past, maybe unsure about moving, um, know that the, the, the product has changed a lot. So if you're looking for specific features, um, they may be there, they may be coming very soon. So let's look at the timeline really quickly. Um, back in October, Atlassian made the announcement about the sunset of server, and, and that gave organizations over three years to, to think about what move they wanted to make. Now, um, it's true that in the interim period, there are changes that to, to what is available. So starting in February 2021, which we've passed, um, it was the end of new licenses sales. So if you are looking right now to buy a new server instance of any of the core products of Atlassian, uh, they're not available anymore. Um, they're also repackaging inside post February 2nd, 2021, they've also repackaged some Atlassian apps. So that means, um, uh, and they, what I mean by repackaging them is they package them into the data center offering. So if you're looking for advanced roadmaps, they're part of data center. If you're looking for insight, it's part of data center GSM. 
So uh, that's all bundled in, and you also get premier support now with your data center instance. February 22nd uh, sees the end of the ability to change user tiers for server instances. So that means you can't go up or down. Um, your user tier is gonna be stay at the same. Um, in 2023, it's the end of new app sales for existing licenses. So that means if you have a current instance and let's say you wanna buy EZBI for server, you won't be able to buy it post 2023 if you don't already own it. So if you're interested in, in any products right now, you should be looking to trial them right now so that you're, you're way in advance of that date and you don't come uh, March 2023 where you're asking for a new product and you won't be able to get them. And then of course, 2024 is the, the end of support. Um, there's there's one additional change uh, that happened in May 1st. And and uh, it's it's really about the, the app marketplace and kind of the app vendors. But just so you know, we can't release any new apps on Atlassian marketplace for server anymore. So that means if whatever we create from now on, um, we won't be able to release it for server. By the way, guys, I, 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 if you have any question, anything, I don't see the chat right now. So, Sebash, if you want to uh, uh, shout and let me know, or if you guys want to come off mute and just interrupt where whatever I, I'm saying, that's fine. I can, I'm totally okay with that. But there's not a lot of people, so just so you guys know, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Sure, I can help you with Jane. If any questions comes up, I can ping you on the DM chat, or like after every 15 minutes, right? I can. Uh stop you and we can uh, check the questions perfect yeah because i i have my presenter view so i can't see the chat right now yeah i understand okay so that's the the may first date by the way sorry okay so with this future end of road for atlassian server you have to make a choice right it's 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 inevitable they can you can stay on server and, and until the last minute, for many organizations, this will actually align with their current budget cycle as they've already committed to certain levels. And if this is a decision that you can take advantage of pre-price increase, so that was before Feb 1st, 2021, so I'll stop reading my notes because we're now post Feb 1st, 2021. Um, but hopefully, uh, if, if, if you're still able to wait till 2024, even though there is a price increase that happened, it was a 15% price increase in the server, you can still uh, renew and make sure that you, you keep that, that price for as long as you can. Um, and, and then, you know, 2024 is the date where, it, where it'll end. But you could also look at, you know, different, different routes uh, with, with different partners or, or by yourself. So let's talk about moving strategically. All right, we know that the timeline is up until February, 2024. So at some point organizations with existing server instances are gonna have to make a change. There are a lot of decisions that feed into a strategic approach. When to move, right? Although Atlassian has set an end date, many organizations will have to take into account work that's already in flight, lockdown periods right now, and also on your servers and systems, minimizing, disrupting your existing user base and all other key business requirements. Whatever date you set, you need to plan back from then to make sure that you have the people, processes, and tool firmly in place to support the move. Where do you wanna move? But are we kind of jumping the gun here with thinking then? Um, we need to also decide where to. And is it data center or cloud instance, or maybe a temporary DC that you know, you wait for cloud to become more mature and then you move. It may even, even be another tool completely, right? There's other um, solutions out there that do agile. How are you gonna move? Again, oh, sorry, sorry. There are options uh, to consider, which may feed back into the previous aspects. Can the organization start anew? How much history do you want to retain? Would a hybrid model of an on-premise and a cloud instance work best? And then who can help you? So, ah, why is it not doing what I want it to do? So who can help you, right? Atlassian has partners around the world and as Adaptivist, um, we're a global partner, of course. So we hope that we'll be your partner of choice if ever you need help. There's also the community out there. There's a lot of resources online. So you, you can always try them, but just so so um, I can show you that we have a, we have a webinar 
uh, that we put on with Ollie Tompkins and uh, one of my colleagues, Phil Fox, who's also an advocate. And um, we were talking about solution partners and cloud migrations. I'll just let them talk a little bit. So we know that larger organizations, when they contemplate a move, many of them will engage with the solution partner. What benefits do you see in that engagement and how soon should it happen? Well, how soon should it happen? As early as possible. Um, a migration to cloud is a, a one-time event, um, much like a wedding, hopefully. Um, and I don't expect migration to be a core competency that our clients want to develop from a talent perspective. So it's a place that partners add tremendous value. Uh, they've done this before. They have people, processes, and tools already developed. Um, typically, I'm seeing clients are leveraging that expertise. Uh, to, to both de-risk the business and accelerate the move to cloud. Um, I had one client that got a quote to do migration services, and um, the client chose to do it themselves. Um, Atlassian provides some you know, support for that client-led migration, but at the end of it, uh, we did a retro, and they said in hindsight that they would have happily paid for that, for, for that partner-led uh, migration experience um, because it took a lot more time than they expected, and they were learning everything for the first time, and their inexperience ultimately delayed their migration um, considerably. And so, so partners really sort of de-risk that that journey, and um, and and just you know add an air of I've been there before, and I've done it, and uh, we'll we'll get you through it. So we know. Oh, sorry. All right. So it's it's really important though to to remember that as you're going to be making a one-time change, do not be scared to ask for help, right? Atlassian solution partners like Adaptivist, and of course your peers on the Atlassian community can and will help you. There's a lot of material and advice out there to help from the Atlassian migration playbooks to talks to videos to the migration assistant tools. So there are resources out there. But cloud for many folks is new and scary. So let's be honest, it's different to on-premise but that doesn't make it all bad. Let's talk a little bit about the sort of journey you can have, right? So let's talk about the journey to the cloud. And to do that, I'll use a, a flaky, not super good analogy, but maybe it works of, of climbing a mountain uh, to kind of talk about that. So let's say that most folks, right? You're gonna have, you're gonna start looking at this journey and you're gonna go, I think I'm gonna be taking everything in the cloud. That's your first go-to and that's normal, right? We don't wanna disrupt. We don't want cha unnecessary, unnecessary change. So we will usually try to get everything. So we'll use our, our, our analogy of, of climbing that mountain. And this is kind of like the major expedition. And just like any major expedition, there's a lot of preparation, coordination and other activities that has to go along with it. The more things that you want to take on your journey, the more this approach will take in both time and effort. So think of it as if you're climbing on foot the mountain. Alternatively, you could use the routes that are already in place here as we use the analogy of a cable car that takes you to the top. So while this will allow you to take some of your stuff, it will be a little bit restricted. Atlassian are providing the tools to help on this journey. So the GCMA, Jira Cloud Migration Assistant, and the Confluence Cloud Migration Assistant, CCMA. And similarly, the marketplace partners are also producing tools to migrate their content and configurations. But just like anything, if you're starting to reduce the amount of stuff that you're taking, it's going to be a little bit faster. And then, of course, there's like leave everything at the, at the, the base of the mountain. And let me just take it take a quick a quick helicopter ride up to the top right so this is severely restricted um you're you're looking at some organizations are looking at a clean slate right maybe you have legacy systems that you think are way out of date and that you're not going to be able to support right and so it's it's kind of one way of cutting through many years of customization changes and and, and legacy systems that you know what, we don't really think they bring value anymore, so maybe we wanna start fresh. Whichever route that you take to reach the cloud, the key thing to remember is that the cloud location will be different to what you're currently using. But before you start on your journey, you need to be prepared. You need to prepare for the expedition. So let's involve the KISS principle. And I don't mean the heavy metal band that I 
barely know, to be honest with you, uh, but I've seen pictures just like anybody. But I'm talking about the keep it simple, stupid. Let's look at two topics that can help you right now. First, we'll look at archiving. Any organization that has been running for some time will no doubt benefit from spending some time looking at archiving. I came across the phrase digital dust relatively recently, and it's really a good term to describe all the material that was produced at some point, but it's kind of sitting there collecting, well, basically dust or digital dust uh, on a shelf. So you have, you know, redundant information. So how can you remove that? performance improvements that through reducing the amount of information in the process. And then there's also some indirect benefits in reducing the amount of storage required both for the live service, but also in your regular backups. So doing all of that is just gonna better your system right now. And on top of that, a simple archive policy might have three steps process, right? So first of all, you make the content read only. Okay, so you stop anyone from making any further changes. Step two is you make it restricted access. You maybe have admins, managers that have access to a project. And then step three is you remove it from the system. Of course, if you remove it from the system, please take any appropriate backup. But doing these things are just going to help your system right now, and they're going to help prepare you for a move to cloud. Uh, removal, sorry. It's very possible that your instance right now is kind of reminding you a lot of the messy library of Minas Tirith here. So looking for things is as complicated as it is for you, if looking for things is as complicated as it is for you than it was for Gandalf, then maybe maybe you need to start doing some house housekeeping. So let's let's talk about housekeeping and where you should start, right? First of all, we're gonna take a look at your apps. Are there any duplicate functionalities? Are they unsupported in cloud? Um, as apps have matured, what they do is they grow. And as you grow, is it's not unusual to find organizations to have maybe two, three different apps that do the same thing because an admin wanted this one and a user wanted that other one. And the new employee that came in had a great idea about this great road mapping tool. And sometimes they also bring low business value. So you have to look at them. Is it is it something that one person is using or is it a thousand plus in the organization that's that's using it and it's actually worth the investment? So that's an easy piece of housekeeping that you can do. And then we'll look at the users, right? Are all your users truly active right now? Is your offboarding process as effective as your onboarding process? Do they have the right access? Can they see the right things? If you're looking at Confluence, right? If you're if you're looking to migrate Confluence, are there any orphan pages, right? Pages that link to nowhere, unused macros that you have on there that are kind of redundant and maybe you don't need them anymore. These are all good examples of things to review and deal with, right? Purge your deleted pages, for example. Um, you, if you didn't know, it's like, it's a trash. It's kind of like your trash on, on a computer. You have to purge those deleted pages. So all this is gonna lower the number of things that you're bringing over to the cloud and make your movie easier. For Jira, of course, you know, um, regularly um, we see inactive schemes. We see backup of, of, of workflows that you don't need anymore, right? Because you create workflows every time you create a project. So you might wanna delete all that. And then in Bitbucket and Bamboo, um, are there any like redundant duplicate repositories or plans for bamboos that you have that you may want to remove? So just like a dog with both a ball and a bone, Atlassian are providing a number of different incentives to encourage you to move to DC or cloud. So from now on, um, DC will be aligned with cloud for loyalty discount with both product ranges having multi-year discounts for early adopters. This is happening before July. So if you're looking, so the, the loyalty discount, if you're looking for a loyalty discount, um, know that as of July 1st, that discount is going to go down. So right now it's at 40% for data center, 55% for, for cloud. Um, if you wait post July, it's going down to, I believe, 30 or 35% for cloud, probably 30. And then I believe it's 40% for 
cloud. So we ha they have a ladder system. So it's a it's a three year program. So if you're looking to get on board and you know you want to move soon, you could do that right now. Um, organizations can also uh, that you are looking to move to cloud can also use the extended cloud license trial for either the duration of your current support license or 60 days, whichever is the greater. So if you have a server instance, for example, right now, and you're looking to move to cloud, you could be looking to leverage the extended cloud license trial, which let's say you're renewed in May, your server licenses, you could get a one year cloud license until next year of May, and that can help you plan your, your, your migration. For larger organizations, so there's a user threshold, there's also the dual licensing. Uh, that's an option. So if you buy a cloud license, they will provide you an on-prem license uh, to go along with it. So you can have parallel licenses while you do the migration. These two tools are very, very important and, and really key in leveraging um, the, your licenses for your migration, okay? Um, when you're migrating, it's never going to be a one month to two weeks engagement. You're usually going to be doing that migration for a long period of time. So if you're going to be doing that, please take a look at these offerings of extended cloud trial licenses and dual licensing um, because you can, you can really take advantage of those and make sure that your users are never disrupted by the change. So let's review really quickly the price table. So that one is for Feb to June. So we're actually going to skip that one um, because, well, we're we're kind of past June. But um, if you're if if we're looking at June 2021 and onward, uh, so that's after June 30th in in a couple of weeks. Uh, the uh, what you need to know is that loyalty discounts and cloud data center and data center loyalty discounts are going to decrease to the second year discount. So, oh, there they are, sorry. So we're looking at 40% for cloud and 30% for data center. And then the second year, you get 20% and 15%. That's uh, taken out Bitbucket. So just so you know, because Bitbucket is already a cloud product, um, if you're if you're looking to, to get it, that that you, you won't get the loyalty discount for moving um, um, that. So that's kind of the pricing structure. So I'm gonna kind of move, but let's do a little bit of, of success takeaways if you don't want to burn money and 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 here's what what we have right business value let's talk about business value it has to be your first driver you have to engage with your stakeholders to share the understanding of the implications of the decisions are we going to cloud are we staying on prem you should plan early and adapt as you learn more things are going to change it's the nature of SaaS. things change every month i know we, we, we do migrations pretty much every day. We have someone going through a production migration. Things change daily. So learn, keep keep learning. And if you're doing it on your own, keep updated with the new things because they happen all the time. Prepare. Use the KISS principle that we talked about or kind of the five why approach to really drill down on what you need. Why do you need these things, right? Test, 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 and test again. <laughs> Repeat the kind of wash cycle until you're comfortable and there will be no surprises. Um, it's really important to test. It's the only way to kind of catch those those little little one-offs that are you're going to miss maybe sometimes. Have UAT, have users go through a, a test instance and make sure that whatever you wanted to migrate has migrated properly. You want to migrate and then you give everyone the new experiences, but don't leave your users hanging okay after the migration you need to hold their hands and reassure them that the, everything is going to be perfect in that new solution because things are going to change um it's not going to look exactly the same buttons are going to be exactly at the same spot so you have users that have been using jira for 10 years that feel like it's kind of a new thing so it, you should never leave your users hanging once it's done you should hold their hand and help them in the post migration support So I started with this image and I described it as a sunset, but I will end with it as, and, and that's, that's my clever bit. Uh, it's like a sunrise, right? On the next evolution of your Atlassian tools. So thanks for listening. And I'm happy to take questions right now. Thank you, Gene. Um, in the chat session, we have the Q&A and uh, we have three queries from Ashish. Uh, could you please look into that? And the chat, the second tab Q and A. Okay, so let me see. Okay, I got a sheesh. 
help we're covering how to migrate to cloud. Okay. So um, Ashish, yeah, for the first question on the migration to cloud, um, using any add-ons or will or it will be the default Atlassian plugin. So um, as you can see, there's no one one cookie cutter question, uh, answer to that question. Right now, um, what we have, what you have is a GCMA and Confluence, the, the CCMA tool. There are tools out there to help you migrate. Um, one of the ones that of course I'm gonna think about and, and please indulge me, but uh, there's Autoblocks that's out there. Um, Autoblocks is a tool that we built to help our own migrations and we thought maybe some customers would actually use them. Um, we use the Autoblocks tool for our ARM migration, which is the biggest migration um, ever to take place to Atlassian Enterprise. Um, the interesting thing about that is it hasn't been recognized yet as a, as a done migration because it's been going on for about a year and a half now. It's not done yet. Uh, we're talking about 10,000 more users, uh, you know, 10,000 plus user base. But what we do with Autoblocks is your GCMA tool is going to be good at, at, at moving this stuff because we don't have access to the back end. Nobody has access to the back end. But uh, the Autoblocks tool runs report before and after to make sure that integrity of data is there. So one of the examples that I, I keep coming back to is we had a, a migration with ARM because we have multiple migrations with them. It's, it's a ladder approach. Um, when we when we did the migration, we migrated all the projects over and they had a bunch of, of attachments and all these attachments said in the GCMA tool that they were migrated successfully. So we went through UAT, people said, yep, everything looks fine, moved on to other things. Two weeks later, we come back in and, and users say that attachments aren't there. And then we figured that when you clicked, we, we learned that when you clicked on the attachments, uh, the attachments were pointing to an old space. Basically, the, the actual attachment wasn't there. It was only a link that got migrated. So inside of Autoblocks, we built what we call a recipe that can look at every link that you migrated and will actually try to open every single document and give you a report on if there's a document missing. So these are the kinds of things that we put into Autoblocks. We call them recipes that you can use. And these recipes are going to help your 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 reporting on your migration. Now, I, I I talk about Autoblocks because it's actually free to use for those kind of purposes. Um, if you're interested in it, I'll, I'll throw the uh, the link in the chat. Um, and all, all, it's basically a, an automation tool that sits outside of the, the stack. So if you're interested, uh, like I said, it, it has a free tier. And in the free tier, you can do basically think of Script Runner, right? You have the script console that you can run scripts out of, like one-offs. So Autoblocks can run unlimited one-offs for free. So all those those kind of reporting aspect, like, hey, is, are the links missing? These are all one-off scripts that outputs a report. So they're free for you to use. So if you're ongoing a migration on your own, maybe you want to check out Autoblocks to, to supplement the GCMA and CCMA tool. Thank you, Gene. Uh, could you provide the resources or the links? Yeah. I'll, I'll throw them in chat, but I'll I'll, sure. I'll make sure to uh, I'll make sure to send uh, send that in the the follow up email. Perfect, perfect. As well, so let me just uh, yeah. So this is the link. I don't know if it's gonna come out as a link, but yeah, okay, cool. So is data center gonna be decommissioned? Um, the official word is no, and I would tend to say no. Um, as the, what we're seeing on the ground is there's a Massive, massive need, especially specifically for the, honestly, kind of the higher tier of customers that need to have on-prem instances and to have access to their databases and make sure that they know where everything is. If ever this were to happen, where 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 data center would be decommissioned, to be honest with you, I would think it's it's one of the, it would be a very bad move for Atlassian. Let's put it that way. They'd be losing a ton of customers. Oh, the video wasn't working. I'm so sorry, guys. I didn't know it wasn't working properly. Uh, but basically, the video was Holly Thumpkins talking about the fact that, um, you know, a, a, I kind of go over it if you haven't kind of heard what, what she was saying. But uh, she's talking a lot about a, a cloud migration being kind of like a, a, a wedding, right? It's a one-time event. It's something that you have to prepare for. It takes a long time. And then you do it. It happens quickly. And then you're done. So... You, you won't necessarily need to train people to do them and you won't necessarily have the resources and time to really prepare. So she's 
um, hinting at the fact that a, a solutions partner and anyone that's out there, of course, Adaptivist is one and we're global, but there are others, um, can definitely help in your journey and kind of be that that wedding planner for you and handle all the things, right? That's kind of the analogy that, that, that she uses. Um, and she goes on to say that she was doing a retro with one of the customers that decided to do it themselves. Um, and they said that they had gotten quotes to do migration and post-migration, doing a post-mortem, they, 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 they kind of figure that it would have been worth it to engage with a partner. So that's what she was saying. Um, okay, so step-by-step -step documentation for cloud migration if you're using project configurators. So project configurator and, and uh, configuration manager, all these tools are um, difficult to use in a cloud migration pattern. Um, we have, for example, right, project configurator PC, we have it for on-premise, so data center, server. We have it for cloud as well, which little funny thing, uh, the project configurator for cloud is actually an Autoblocks program. So what I sent you, the link, uh, Autoblocks is much more than just a migration tool, but I won't go over all that. But the project configurator for Jira Cloud is actually based, built on the, the Autoblocks tool as the platform. Um, so they're not really good, honestly, tools to do migrations. The reason is that whenever we migrate issues and stuff like that, we're, it's not built to handle millions of issues quickly. It's not built to handle them in a clean way either. It's really built for um, uh, you know, upgrading content to from staging to, to prod or moving content from one to the across or, or syncing. But uh, as far as migration, I wouldn't necessarily recommend Project Configurator to be honest to, to use. Um, so yeah, I think I went through the questions. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Things I talked about maybe quickly or glanced over that you're interested in talking a bit more? I'm kind of here for that. Uh, Jane, we have one more query. What's a clean way to migrate if there are any steps? So the, the, the cleanest way to migrate is to use the GCMA tool alongside a partner to make sure that your, um, so really a migration is kind of a triangle. Um, it's about making sure that you engage with the right people at the right time within that triangle, right? And I'm talking about customer partner Atlassian. Atlassian doesn't do migrations themselves. They build tools to help us do that, but they don't have consultants in house to help you do that. So they have we have a strong bond with them, right? Every partner out there has a strong bond with Atlassian. And so whenever we do moves, we are you know working hand in hand with them on the back end. The reason why I say it's not easy to have a clean migration, we don't have access to the back end. I can't grab the database and throw it on cloud and be done with it. I, I, first of all, I don't have access to the database on cloud. And second of all, the database is, is not, maybe not structured the same way. I don't know. I have no visibility on that. And so if you think about it this way, it's, 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 it's a tricky thing to move. Right. And, and the simplest things are going to make a, a, a migration fail. So IDs that don't match up a, 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 you know, last week I saw a, a, a question mark in a status uh that got changed and then it was like an error but it threw an error in the gcma tool and the migration had to keep going even though they knew that it was going to fail so it's all about testing it's all about testing and the best way to make sure that you have a clean migration is to test as much as, as you can do trial 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 trials i the last thing i'll say though is people think that clean um the easiest way to do clean is to go agile right so do it iteratively let's do one step at a time let's do one module at a time one group at a time one team at a time one agile team at a time the problem with that is like i said cloud is an is a moving target it keeps changing all the time and so whatever you did three months ago for that first team is probably not going to be the same for that sixth team that you're on now and so things could break at any time during that during that transition period so if you're thinking of doing a team by team approach, I'm just letting you know there, there, there could be more and more errors. The error I'm talking about is exactly because a migration succeeded two months ago. The team is not working in cloud. They're changing things. And now whatever they had as data when they tested it 
two months ago is not valid anymore because the cloud, the target instance has changed. So I, I really recommend honestly doing it as a one weekend approach. So it's like we grab everybody and you're going to be on cloud. So that means a lot of testing, a lot of planning, and then actually planning the, 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 uh, the migration on a weekend or, or for a specific time and just doing it all at once. That's the one thing I can, I can say about doing a clean migration. Thank you. Insightful uh, discussion on the points. But the way you started with the journey, way back um, in 2020 till 2024, where the end of the support will be at February 2nd, and how to move strategically, like when to move, where to go, how to move, how can I? You know, like this, the whole journey with the retrospective of the communication that's happening is like, yeah, it's a good practice. That if we are following these or having principles and housekeeping principles and the incentives and the price table, right? So mm -hmm. it gives a lot of insights on how we can plan and how we can move strategically in the cloud migration. Uh, in the interest of time, if you have any other meeting schedule, would you be able to show the tool in the marketplace, like in the Atlas and market your tool? I know that you're yeah. going to share some resources in the follow-up email. Uh, yeah, let, let me, let me show you. Yeah. Let me show you I mean, two tools. Oh, if you have the I... time. Sorry? If you have the time now. Yeah, yeah, so yeah I, I have like, the time. Uh, yeah, we'll get to know time. like that, the tools. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, let me show you um, two tools that I, I really like. Um, and again, you know, Please indulge me. I know I'm going to be talking about Adaptivist tools, but hey, we're an app vendor as well. And we, we, to be honest with you guys, like migration has been on top of our mind, right? Most of the app vendors out there, uh, the tools that they build are for specific things. Like, for, for example, right, we we're talking about EZBI. EZBI is a magnificent reporting tool, right? But, and they need to migrate their data. But other than, than migrating EZBI, we, we actually do consulting so we, we we build tools to help us as consultants provide a better service and then when we have these tools we find them very useful we think of a way to package them and, and give them to our customers either give them or of course paying for them so let me share my screen and, and show you guys two different things that i have here um so um can you do window yeah okay perfect so what I have here is, let me open this up a bit more. Okay. So this is Autoblocks. So this is the connect anything to everything, but it, it also powers a lot of our migration efforts. So the idea behind Autoblocks is what do we do in a SaaS world where no one has access to the database and all we do is we interact with REST APIs. And so Autoblocks does that, right? It, it interacts with REST APIs. So if I go into it really quickly, let me just sign in. Sorry guys, I, I wasn't necessarily prepared to showcase the tool. So let me just, log in. So what we have in there. Do you use scripting for this auto blocks? So you don't necessarily need to. So if I if I show you what we do is you, you connect the different instances. Uh, Square is going to be the cloud instances, and then the arrows are going to be the on-prem instances. So you connect them to the tool, and then when you build a workspace, why I say you don't necessarily need scripting is because of this. If you go into the CCMA options and GCMA options, you'll see compare issue links in two Jira instances. Compare issue remote links into Jira instances and find the broken links. Uh, compare project configurations from Jira on-prem to Jira cloud instances. So if you select these scripts, um, you know you can go into them, and then what you do is you select your target, your, your source, so which would usually be an on-premise instance, and then you select the target. And if you go into the code, this is already built for you. You don't need to touch anything. It's going to output a report automatically. So you just do the manual trigger and then you're good to go. So it's it's as simple as that. Um, 
So you don't necessarily need coding, but kind of like Script Runner, we give you the ability to change the code. So you could go in there. If you understand, this is all built in, in TypeScript. If you understand TypeScript, you could go in and just do things if you wanted to. So it's, it's kind of both. And we're building more and more no-code, low-code um, modules so that one day we'd want to do kind of the Blockly thing. So you'd have like an if loop, and then you could just drop a, 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 a loop, uh, which is a block, and then you could do some, some other blocks in there. So that's the first one. And like I said, it's actually free to use right now. Um, and we don't really intend on, on taking away the free to use tier. So if you just want to test it, it does a bunch of other things, which I'm not going to go over because we're focusing on cloud migrations, but it also does like Slack, Google Sheets, all that, which is really neat. The other tool I really want to talk about is um, Microscope for Jira Audit. So this is actually an internal tool uh, that we built. And that tool basically was for our own migrations. We had clients, of course, coming to us and asking, hey, we're doing automation, which is why we're coming to you, Adaptivist, because we know you're a script runner, so you're kind of the masters of that. We don't know what we have on our instance, though. And what we used to do was we'd go in and actually look through every workflow to basically write down in a run book every single automation that you had. Of course, we said this is just insane. This is not, you know, scalable. This is not going to, it's not sustainable. So we built Microscope internally. And Microscope was our way to quickly do something, which is uh, scope out all the automation tools that you have and how you use them. So that this way we could say, okay, we have this many things that we need to change, that many things we need to change. And so um, using Microscope, what you, what you do is you just go in, you run a scan, we call it, and then the scanner is gonna output a CSV file that will then give you every single, as a line item, every single automation that you have in your workflows. So that means, and it's regardless of if it's just script runner, it could be it could be uh, automations for Jira, it could be uh, GS, uh, JSU, JMWE. All these are gonna be listed out in the CSV file, which you can then do filters on it and play around with the data. But basically, you then get a checklist of all the things that you need to change. So let's say you're moving to cloud and you wanna remove, and I'm gonna use script runner. Maybe you wanna remove script runner. Um, you could go through that list and change every automation in your source instance. So remember, you do clean up before you move, not after. So you go into your source instance and you change all the automations to whatever you want. And also remember when I said you may have duplicates, right? Maybe, maybe you're using three tools to clone issues automatically on transitions while using the jcma tool uh, the, the microscope tool you can now have a list of every time you clone an issue and make sure that you standardize the tool that you use to clone an issue so this has been like a really a huge time saver for our customers um if you're interested in that it's currently going for 10 bucks but if you send us an email at hello at adaptivist.com we'll uh, we'll make sure that you get access to this, uh, um, you know, on an extended trial basis, let's put it that way. Um, we're not looking to make necessarily money off of that. So um, just just let us know. And as you can see, like the $10 is just uh, kind of, of, of symbolic more than anything. But this has been huge. Um, one of my, one of my uh, customers that I interact with on a monthly basis, um, I meet with them every month and they, they used the tool and they came back and they just said, like, you saved us literally 40 hours of work. Like, with one tool, one click, you literally save 40 hours of men, men, men hour or, or woman hour or whatever. But it's a powerful tool. So it's available on the marketplace. It's for server and data center, of course, because it's a migration tool. But if you're interested, uh, there's there's that. That's available. So yeah, that, those are kind of the two tools I wanted to talk about really quickly to help you on your migration journey. But really the microscope one is just a game changer if you're just looking for something quick to provide value. One of the reasons why one of, the, one of our customers is using it to um, make a business case to hire more people. So <laughs> one of the things that came out of it is like, hey, look, we have, I think they had over a thousand automation. Like it was like something like 1200 and they were talking about how they could they couldn't maintain 1200 automations and things as the company the company was going to grow so they could use that for as as really as hard data 
to show the amount of customization that goes into the tool. It can also help saying, hey, maybe maybe data center is the best way because as, as maybe you know or you don't know, automations in cloud is a little bit trickier than automations on premise. Um, so if you're heavily automated, we tend to uh, advise maybe trying to stay on premise as much as possible. So that can be another powerful tool to use to, to build a business case. So yeah, that's out there. That's available for, for free if you, if you want it. First two plugins really looks interesting. And uh, what's more interesting is uh, the auto blocks. Because the word itself is like, wow, it's like complete robotics, complete, it's like <laughs> auto walls in the Star Wars movies, Star Wars movies. So do we have yeah. a session on that? Is it possible? A kind of We're webinar kind our, of session? So yeah, so we could definitely do something. If you want, I, I I could I could hop on a call on another one of these and we could we could go through it and what it does. I have a bunch of examples uh, mm -hmm. interacting with Lassian tools, but I also have a bunch of examples kind of interacting with maybe Slack, right? Which is a partner of, of Atlassian. Um mm -hmm. so I mean if you want to uh set something up, we could do something in the future where we, we go over it. Um yeah, it's it's to me it's the 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 script runner of, of SAS. Uh, basically, anything that has a REST API now has Script Runner in a way. So it is a coding. It is a coding. Right now, it's heavy on code, but we're building it more and more to use those recipes that I was talking about, so that they're kind of easy to use and you don't need to code anymore. Right? We're learning a lot from Script Runner um, and how we built that tool and how it was built in the past with Jamie and everybody. And like, how do we make it so that our tool starts off maybe? with more documentation, easier access to it. It's not a, right, Script Runner was built as an engineering tool in the beginning, right? It was an engineer building something to code. Now we're, we're looking at it from a, a much much broader sense. How do, we, how do we help people automate their processes? So that's what it does. It's a fantastic journey. Game changer is not a small thing for Atlas and for Jira. The entire marketplace plugins have been competing with Jira to give the best to the end users and to the data centers in the cloud. Um, all right. So, team, do you anyone have any anyone have any queries or questions for Jane? You may ping in the chat window, or you can unmute yourself and you can ask any questions before we wrap up the session, the event. Ashish, 